Hi friends, I welcome you all here at TNV Academy. In this session, we are about to discuss the clause 7.2, competence of an international standard, that is ISO IEC 22301-2019, that is security and resilience, business continuity management systems. In this session, we shall cover all the requirements of clause 7.2, competence in detail along with some examples for your ease as the requirement of clause 7.2 depend upon the requirement of clause 1, clause 4 and clause 6 of the standard I would like to recommend you referring these clauses for better understanding of clause 7.2 Now let us discuss about the outcome of this session After completing this session you will be enabled to understand and verify the implementation of requirements of clause 7.2 of the ISO 22301-2019. You will also be enabled to determine and provide the necessary competence of person or persons doing work under its control that affects its business continuity performance to achieve the BCMS objectives. You will also understand taking actions to acquire the necessary competence and evaluate the effectiveness of the actions taken. Now, coming to the mandatory documentation requirements under this clause 7.2. According to the clause, organization should retain appropriate documented information as evidence of competence to meet the requirements of the standard. Let's discuss the clause 7.2 of ISO 22301-2019 which is competence. Let me read the requirement of clause 7.2 first. It states, the organization shall, point one, shall determine the necessary competence of person or persons doing work under its control that affects its business continuity performance. Point two, shall ensure that these persons are competent on the basis of appropriate education, training or experience. Point three, where applicable, take actions to acquire the necessary competence and evaluate the effectiveness of the actions taken. Point 4. Shall retain appropriate documented information as evidence of competence. Here is a note. Applicable actions can include, for example, the provision of training to, the mentoring of, or the reassignment of currently employed persons or the hiring or contracting of competent persons. Now, let's understand this clause 7.2, competence, which describes the guidance that must be followed by all staff members in order to be considered competent of the requirements. This procedure ensures that all employees are performing to their best ability in their particular segment of expertise. The purpose of the competence procedure is to define process of organization for undertaking the necessary actions and responsibilities for ensuring that the competencies required is meeting customer and other external or internal requirements. This competence procedure also defines the responsibilities for planning, reporting and retaining associated records. The organization should establish a practice for evaluating existing staff competencies against changing business needs and prevailing trends. Organization should check for evidence that all staff members who work under organization's control are competent and that evidence continuing competence is maintained as documented information in accordance to clause 7.5 of the standard. Organization can define the competency requirements by actively identifying training requirements and delivering the training actively. Competency requirements can be defined by actively monitoring the effectiveness of the training given to staff members. Training should never be performed as an inconsiderate reaction with no actual objectives, but instead it should be advanced towards permitting each employee with the skills and knowledge they need to move the organization forward and improve customer contentment. As per clause 7.2 requirements, organization should train the staff 
to improve their skills and overall performance. Comparing existing performance to post-training performance is a simple way of evaluating the efficiency of training. Organization can consider making provision for the following questions related to audit. What type of training is given to new employees? How the training has been evaluated? What steps are taken by the organization when training is considered unproductive? What types of training records are maintained by the organization? So friends, practicing all this information, organization can determine and provide the necessary competence of working persons under its control, affecting its business continuity performance to achieve the organization's objectives. Now, coming to an important aspect of the standard, that is, practice writing non-conformity under this clause. Please see the Auditor Finding Action Report and see on the screen for writing non-conformities under this clause. I leave it up to you now. Please go through this and try to understand the various components of this non-conformance report. And now we have reached at the end of this session. I sincerely thank you all for your interest and attention. Thanks and best wishes.